Hey friend, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Jasmine Lane, thanks for hanging out with me. Now, today, Pierre Polyev absolutely dropped the mic, revealing just how much money the Liberal government has made from the federal carbon tax, which is rather interesting since the Liberals, and Trudeau specifically, often argue that the government isn't making any money off of carbon tax, but boy, are you ever about to be amazed with just how much money they are making off of it, and just how much money you are giving them for quite literally nothing because that money as we know it is not going to any green initiatives no it is an incentive changing tax despite there being no alternatives. And if you have anybody in your life who likes to think that you're a wacko because you aren't for the carbon tax, there are multiple bombshells dropped in this video. I was in a great mood. Let's ruin it. Gonna have Seth to go the honorable speaker. leader of the opposition. The Prime Minister's wacko carbon tax obsession is costing Canadians not just at the pump, but it raises the cost of home heating, of groceries, because of course if you tax the farmer who produces the food and the trucker who ships the food, you tax all who buy the food. It's a housing tax because it raises the cost of building materials that go into homes. With the report out today that 25% of young people had to go to a food bank in just three months, will he accept the common sense conservative bill to take the tax off the farmers who produce our food. You know, to that point, it is very interesting to see just how this carbon tax was implemented and the massive debt. In fact, it is more debt than any other prime minister in Canadian history combined has ever created for the country. Why else would the Liberal government want to be increasing taxes? Well, likely to try and get out of that massive deficit that grows year after year after year. But don't you worry, because the budget will balance itself. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the Leader of the Opposition continues to make that argument, even though he knows full well that Farm fuels are 95% exempt from the price on pollution right across the country, Mr. Speaker. That is something that he ignores because of his ideological opposition to take any action in fighting climate change. Well, Mr. Speaker, I can tell you, in conservative writings right across the country, people are worried about droughts, people are worried about floods, people are worried about wildfires that are more and more severe. Canadians need a clean plan to fight climate change, which is something he hasn't put forward while we are fighting climate change and putting money in people's pockets. Let's just break that down for a second. While we are fighting climate change, how so? Actually, do you want to, uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, maybe just give us all an example of all of these amazing things that you're doing to fight climate change? Oh, right. That's, that's right. There actually aren't any. You just talk a big talk, but oh, yeah. There isn't a single thing that is being funded by this money you're putting in people's pockets, not to mention how absolutely asinine it is to even say, oh, we're fighting climate change by taking your money and giving it back to you. The Honorable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister's carbon tax applies on barns, on grain drying, on fertilizers, on off-farm vehicles. It costs literally tens of thousands of dollars for many individual farmers, all of which gets passed on. But the Prime Minister, instead of defending his taxes, resorted to a really wacko and unhinged claim that if Canadians just paid more taxes, there would be suddenly less fires. I thought that water and not taxes put out fires. But maybe the Prime Minister can clarify, how high would his tax have to go for forest fires to stop? Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, Canadians are facing the impacts of the extreme weather events that come from climate change that are unfortunately getting worse and worse every year. That is why our government from, uh, from 2015 onwards has stepped up in the fight against climate change because not only are we uh, reducing Canada's emissions to the lowest level outside the pandemic in 25 years, but we're also stepping up in the jobs and technological innovations that the world needs to success fully fight climate change. We will continue to fight climate change, Mr. Speaker, and put more money in people's pockets while he sits with his arms crossed and... 
I actually want to fact check this because I'm curious about how Canada suddenly now has the lowest emissions since 2019 pre-pandemic. Um, actually, according to ChatGPT, however reliable that is, it says global emissions haven't significantly reduced since 2019. There was a temporary dip in 2020 due to COVID-19 restrictions, but emissions rebounded in 2021 and are expected to be close to 2019 levels by the end of 2023. So obviously that's slightly outdated. However, though, again, Canadian emissions account for next to nothing on a global scale and emissions are something that affect the globe. So even if Canada was completely wiped out, that wouldn't fix the climate change things that are happening in our country because, in fact, we are not the contributors for those other countries such as Asia or India, or I guess Asia is a continent, but other other areas of the world are, are actually significantly higher contributors than that. And they're not even in the talks in terms of having any sort of emission cutbacks. In China, actually, they're building about a coal plant a week right now, and they're not in the talks whatsoever. It's only us when we are contributing next to Nothing, which is fascinating. The Honorable Leader of the Opposition. He didn't answer my question. You know, Now he says that his taxes are going to make Canada a high-tech wonderland um, before his claim was that it was going to stop forest fires. It's him that made the link, not me, obviously. I think the link between the two is absolutely ridiculous because his tax is not an environmental plan. It's a money-collecting plan. It's a plan of government greed. So I'll ask the question again. He wants to hike the tax to 61 cents a litre. If it gets to that high and people are all starving in the streets, will that stop the forest fires? <laughs> the Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, in the Leader of the Opposition's desire to make clever rhetorical points, he actually completely ignores the basic facts. The price on pollution is revenue neutral for the federal government. That means the money that comes in for the price on pollution for the carbon tax gets returned to the jurisdictions and is why the Parliamentary Budget Officer found 8 out of 10 Canadian families in jurisdictions where the carbon price applies do better with the Canada carbon rebate that comes in four times a year than the price on pollution costs them. That's a plan to fight climate change and put money in people's pockets. Okay, so that's actually not a plan to fight climate change whatsoever. He quite literally just said that he's taxing us for zero reason because he's giving us all the money back. And don't you worry, there is a bombshell coming up. Even if you want to argue the point that eight out of 10 families do better with the carbon tax rebate that you're relying on periodically throughout the year rather than just cheaper prices, the reason for that has a lot to do with how high the poverty rates are in Canada. So yes, obviously, a family who is still receiving a rebate despite the fact that they do not own a vehicle despite the fact that they are on food stamps which is becoming an increasingly high statistic in the country is going to do well this is not a, a statistic of we have a really great society where everybody is just loaded in cash no Canada has an extreme poverty problem we have an extreme food bank reliance problem that nobody is taking seriously and the fact that eight out of ten Canadians that's not eight out of ten successful Canadians if anything even though that number has been shown to actually not be correct. Um, if you want to argue that, that has more to do with the fact that eight out of 10 Canadians are so impoverished right now that they are actually benefiting from that 145 or 225 if you are a multiple family home. Uh, so even that argument is not a good one because it doesn't signal growth in the Canadian economy. It doesn't signal growth in our mental well-being. In reality, you're actually just highlighting how much we are struggling right now. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Oh, Mr. Speaker, I'm sorry to be too clever for the Prime Minister, <laughs> but he's the one who made the argument that high taxes would stop forest fires, and now he can't tell us how high the tax would go to put all the fires out. He went on now to say that his tax is revenue neutral. Well, you don't have to be too clever to read the government's own published documents, which shows that he has collected $2 billion more in taxes than he's given back in rebates. That's why 100% of middle class Canadians pay more than they get back. So once again, will he tell those middle class people how high the tax would have to go for the fires to stop? Right.
I also do want to say this as a quick debunk. There's a lot of people who are climate pushers. I don't know what the word is. What do we call them? Activists, climate activists. And they always say that, you know, the amount of human death is increasing year after year due to climate change. But if you actually look at that data, the amount of human death is increasing year after year due to exposure to the elements, which again signals more to the extreme crisis that we are experiencing with lack of housing and poverty. The reason why people are dying is not due to the climate coming to get them. It's due to the fact that they cannot afford a home, a safe space to spend the night. The Right Honorable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, what we just saw is climate denialism at its finest. The fact is, as global emissions rise, as, uh, as carbon intensity in the atmosphere increases, extreme weather events like wildfires, droughts, and floods will simply become more and more frequent. Now, his plan is to do nothing, Mr. Speaker, and let future generations fend for themselves. Our plan is not only to reduce our emissions, but to create the solutions that the world needs while we lead on fighting climate change, bringing down emissions, and growing the economy. Okay, so again, I would just love for you to show us exactly how you're doing that because all you've done is repeat the exact same talking points uh, throughout this entire six minute long clip. Funny, I actually learned a few things from Pierre Polyev, including the amount of money the liberal government has made off of this tax. He went on now to say that his tax is revenue neutral. Well, you don't have to be too clever to read the government's own published documents, which shows that he has collected $2 billion more in taxes than he's given back in rebates. But I did not learn anything at all when it came to uh, Trudeau defending it. We need to deal with the climate crisis as a globe, uh, not just in Canada, because again, our emissions are so incredibly low on a global scale. It does not even make a dent. And more people need to realize that and need to be questioning why the hell these other countries are not being forced to be a part of the conversation, why they don't care, and why we are having, you know, 41% of our paychecks going to taxes on top of being taxed for absolutely everything under the sun. I'd love to hear your input on this. If you have any of the answers to some of the questions that either Pierre or myself have posed the Liberal government, feel free to drop them in the comments below. If you have any further points to make about how ridiculous this argument is getting at this point and where our focus really needs to be in Canada right now, feel free to comment below. I, uh, I love having those conversations with you. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, follow, whatever it is you got to do that everybody else on YouTube tells you to do. I'm Jasmine Lane and I'll talk to you next time.